Entering the album Infest the Rat's Nest, for the first time in the band's discography, we switch gears into the genre of heavy metal rock. And as we start with the first track titled Planet B, we're once again reminded of humanity's negligence towards the world that we inherit. Open your eyes and light the fluid, get into a petrol cycle. No one middle ground in fields, bury children. Urbanization, scarification, population, exodus. There is no planet B. These words paint the picture of an earth that is doomed, where most of humankind have chosen to leave it in search of starting somewhere new. But as the song's title grimly reminds us, there is no other planet exactly like earth, no other avenue of escape, and potentially very little hope for humankind to continue. Only way through is colonization, acclimatization, population, exodus, monetization, The song is clearly a metaphor for warning us against looming ecological disasters such as climate change, nuclear war or the expenditure of resources that threaten to destroy the earth and leave it looking like a barren wasteland. But coming back to the video, there's also several visual clues worth mentioning that fit in with these ideas. Firstly, at the beginning, we open up to a shot of seven individuals dressed in orange jumpsuits who are barking and laughing hysterically, which feels very similar to a scene from the film Dogtooth directed by Yorgos Lanthimos, where the father in the movie who keeps his adult children ignorant of the outside world teaches them how to bark in order to fend off the most dangerous creatures that exist. Cats. So perhaps in the music video for Planet B, the connection to Dogtooth is suggesting that these seven individuals are also ignorant of the world around them, potentially because of the lies fed to them from someone they view as a leader, who they think is there to protect them, but in reality is just making sure that they are doing whatever they are told and isn't letting them think for themselves. Which relates back to the idea of humanity's own ignorance to the environment around them, who often appoint and listen to the voices of equally as ignorant leaders that blindly inform them on what's best for the world. But why the hysterical laughter? Well to me, it could be an indication that these individuals are perhaps insane, as they appear to be laughing and smiling like maniacs, which might also explain why they are wearing orange clothes that look similar to the orange jumpsuits given to criminals or deranged people, meaning that the smiling and laughing could once again be symbolically reflecting the idea of humanity's ignorance towards the actions on the environment, who might be crazy enough to believe that they are actually doing good for the world, to the point where they can be happy and even laugh about it, because they cannot mentally comprehend the seriousness and dire consequences of their actions. Which leads into why they are killed off in the rest of the video by a lone gunman. Because just like dangerous criminals that escape, the seven individuals must be kept in place by being hunted down one by one, perhaps symbolizing that humankind must be stopped for the greater good of the planet. And although this could be a fortunate coincidence, the gunman in the music video also looks to be inspired by the hitman from the film Looper, directed by Ryan Johnson, which involves hitmen who are hired to kill people that are sent back in time. So while I'm not saying that these seven individuals were necessarily sent back from the future, it could be another way of suggesting that the only way to prevent the consequences of humankind's actions in the future is to remove the possibility of them even taking place by ending their existence in the present. Moving on to the song Mars from the Rich, we get the story of a poor boy living on an earth that appears to be environmentally deformed and who describes his feelings of sorrow towards not being able to afford to leave it and head to the giant red planet above him where the rich now reside. I'm just a poor boy, living
Evidently, this song is inspired by the idea of leaving Earth and colonizing other planets such as Mars, a move that is often seen as an exit plan strategy for humanity in the future, who no longer might be able to live on Earth due to our actions that again could cause climate change, nuclear war, or the expenditure of resources. And with the mention that Mars is now a place for the rich, it falls in line with the thinking that the first to leave Earth will likely be those that can afford the high price tag of doing so. Given recent ventures from billionaires like Elon Musk, who not only believe in the idea of colonizing Mars, but is already selling million dollar tickets to his space program to the moon. I want to also briefly mention that the band also released a video game based on this song, which is a first person shooter by the same name, where you have to try and survive for as long as you can against the massive hordes of rats that try to attack you. But I bring this up to highlight one of the game's easter eggs, which can only be found outside of the map after shooting pictures of all the other animals except the bull and the ant, which in doing so will reveal this mysterious song. still yet to figure out whether all of this has any significance to the Gizverse, and I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't, but by drawing attention to it, hopefully someone out there might be able to make sense of it if there's anything to make in the first place. So if you do, please let me know. Or maybe this is just a sneak preview of things to come. Fingers crossed for a Gizwave album in the future. Next on the chopping block we get the song Organ Farmer, a track that departs from the environmental and space exploration themes of the past two songs and marks a sudden turn into showcasing the brutal practice of harvesting organs. While the song initially feels out of place from what we've seen in the Gizverse, the lyrics of a new life being christened implies familiar themes of achieving immortality and divinity that we've already noted in previous volumes. But it's the song's bridge that further reaffirms such ideas by suggesting there exists a citadel where human laboratories are guarded, which looks to be a place where humans are being experimented on. In my opinion, these words are describing a place where humankind is being transformed to become cyborgs, since the mention of wiretapping divinity through a human laboratory once again resonates with the idea of humanity striving to achieve immortality and divinity by upgrading themselves to become their cybernetic counterparts. And perhaps Horgan Farmer is showing us the early attempts by humankind to do so, given the brutality of the process described in the lyrics, but also by what is portrayed in the video, which appears to be quite disturbing as it shows us a large group of humans locked away in a giant warehouse, almost like they are being held against their will for later harvesting and transformation. But this is where we'll have to leave the first half of the album and reach the conclusion for what we know for Volume 5, before we prepare to shift gears and enter outer space as we join a group of travellers on their journey to Venus.
Someone wants to know who takes care of the Zanzibar gem while you're on tour. Us dead. <laughs> uh oh. Died ages ago. That's so, long ago. <laughs> so hard to kill, but our we studio, our dark studio, did it somehow. Our airless studio. Did you?